What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Now I apologize in advance, you may hear some noise in the background there outside doing some drilling on the street. Um, if you can hear it, I'm sorry, so I just wanna let you know that in advance. But I just wanted to make this video because I had this question asked to me the other day. How should a real estate agent dress? And I wanted to share my opinion. How should a real estate agent dress? Hmm. When I first joined DXP, I took the train to go meet my mentor. Uh, we we're supposed to meet up for coffee to formally introduce ourselves, nothing fancy. So I throw on some sweatpants, a nice t-shirt, and I hop on the train. Um, I get off the train, I get into her car. I go, hey, how you doing? And she just looks at me and she lets me have it. Why are you dressed like that? What if I had a meeting to go to and I want to take you with me? I can't take you with me dressed like that. What if when we go to, to the coffee shop, somebody comes to you and they wanna talk about real estate? Are you over here, somebody talking about real estate? Are you gonna go and say, I'm a real estate agent dressed like that? Anytime that you go outside, you should be dressed by the way that you wanna be addressed. Nice to meet you too. That is a piece of wisdom that has stuck with me to this day. Every time I'm getting dressed for an appointment, I hear her voice in the back of my mind. Make sure you dress the way that you want to be addressed. And I think that statement is so true. However, it also made me think about this other time when I used to do insurance sales back in the day and this situation that I had with my mentor at the time. Now this was a younger guy, early 20s. I mean, he made a lot of money. He was like high six figures, um, but he was like a scrawny, skinny guy. He had, a, he had a big gap in his teeth, so he was wearing braces at the time. But I mean, like I said, he made a lot of money. Uh, he drove all these fancy cars at the time we were driving, a, or he was driving a Jag. Um, he had a gold Rolex. He had the nice suits, the Ferragamo shoes. He, he was a very dapper guy. So we go to this house to do our presentation. It's an older couple, a nice middle-class neighborhood. You know, we're talking about their finances at the table. And, and it's like, they, they make money, but it's not like they make a lot of money. They don't have that much savings. Um, they still own the house. They still own the cars. So we're sitting there and we're trying to get them to purchase this four or $500 insurance premium, right? So we sit at the table and the wife sits at the front of the, at the head of the table. The husband sits at the left of her. My guy sits on the right side and I'm on the side of him. And as soon as we sit down, she just becomes immediately fixated on this guy. Now again, she's sitting at the head of the table, so she's staring right out the window. So he starts to talk, and first thing she says is, oh, is that your car, is that your Jack? And he says, yeah, it is, da, 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 da. And he pivots back into the conversation. Now, this is a great salesman. He, like I said, he makes a lot of money. He's a great salesman. So he pivots back into the conversation. He's talking, he's talking, he's talking. She's like, and he's moving his hand. She's like, oh, that's a nice Rolex. And he's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And he, again, he pivots back into the conversation. So then uh, he's talking more, he's smiling, and she notices the braces. Now think about it, a guy this this young, um, the, the braces, he's probably financing them himself. You know, a brace was like a couple thousand dollars back then. But we're still going on with the conversation. And then he tries to go in for the clothes. He takes out this pen. It's a nice, very nice pen, uh, gold-plated pen. He puts it on a contract and he slides it over to her. She picks up the pen and she just stares at it. She said, this is a nice pen. And she stares at it. Now, long story short, we did not get that deal. And that's why it made me think about that situation because yes, you should dress by the way that you want to be addressed, but you should also know your audience. Being the best dressed, driving the fanciest cars, yes, that can get you a lot of attention, but sometimes it's just not the attention that you want. And this was a perfect example of that because they just couldn't relate to each other. You're sitting up here, we know that they're middle class, we know what their finances are looking like, and now we're trying to get them to purchase an extra four or $500 insurance premium on top of that. And then they see you driving around with the Jag, they see the, the gold uh, Rolex on your arm. So in their mind, they're thinking like, is this really going to help me or is this going to benefit you more than it's going to help me? Because you seem to be living a lot better than we're living. You can make a lot of money in sales. That $1,000 commission check can easily jump to five, 10, 15, 20,000 and even more. So what's the first thing that we want to do with this newfound wealth? We want to show it off. That means we want to go and get the nicest car, uh, get some new wardrobes, get some some watches, some earrings, the purses, the heels, the newest shoes. We want it all. And there's nothing wrong with that. You should be able to celebrate your wealth. But the thing is, you also have to read the room. Take Million Dollar Listing, for instance. How do they dress? Those people look like movie stars. And I'm not talking, they don't look like your normal real estate agents. They look like movie stars. They got the flyest cars. They got the houses. Uh, they got the wardrobe. They always look like they're stepping out of a magazine shoot. 
but also they're dealing with multi-millionaires. That's their clientele. They want to be able to reflect that and, and look like they fit in. That's the whole point of that, that image. Now, if I was to go to a $30 million listing appointment and I pull up in a Honda Accord, I'm out of place. So most likely I'm not going to get that listing, but reverse it. The same thing for them. If they pull up to a neighborhood and their car costs more than the, the house that they're going on a listing appointment with, most likely they're not going to get the deal because it's just something off about that equation. My price point for houses is around four to $600,000. That is my bread and butter. I'm not going to go into these appointments rock some fancy three-piece suit because I know that's overkill. I'm not even wearing a tie. I'm wearing a nice button up. I'll unloosen the top button, a nice sweater, maybe even a blazer. I even think that's overkill, but I wear some nice slacks and some nice comfortable walking shoes. I want to be able to relate when I go into these rooms. I want these people to feel comfortable around me. You know, I don't own a car. I have to rent a car every time I'm going out to one of these appointments. I always go for the conservative option. Um, I, yeah, I can get the Mercedes if I want to. I get the BMW if I wanted to, but that doesn't benefit nobody. I know the neighborhoods that I'm going into. Now, if it was a luxury appointment, um, a million dollar listing, then yeah, I may upgrade and give me something nice or Mercedes or something like that. That's only because I understand the environment that I'm going into and how important it is to fit into that environment. What about the week? Weekend. Yes, you got me. I'm a little bit more casual during the weekend. I don't wear a collared shirt. I wear a nice short sleeve shirt. It's still ironed. It's tucked in. Um, the sun is out. I want my guns to show a little bit. I got the, the nice khakis that's ironed and the nice casual walking shoes. Now, I do this for my, my weekend showings or any type of open houses that I have over the weekend. Now, I done had other agents come out and they've been in track suits, the newest Jordans. Uh, their clothes are wrinkled. They just look dirty. They look like they woke up yesterday. And I'm like, it's this is how you really want to represent yourself? How you want to represent your brand? We have to constantly check ourselves because nobody's going to do it for us. Um, this beard, for instance, I started growing this beard a couple of months ago. I've never had a beard before. It looks great on the weekend. I actually do like it. It looks great on the weekend because I get my hair cut on Thursday. So he lines it up and it just looks so much nice and clean and crisp uh, during the weekend. But Monday comes around and now it's time to go back to work and it just doesn't look that clean and neat and that presentable. So I'm getting rid of it. It just doesn't benefit me anymore. It's too much maintenance for me. I'm just going to get rid of it. I'm going to go back to my goatee that I used to have. Uh, that's so much easier to maintain. Anytime I have an appointment, I can just go ahead and line it up myself at home and I don't have to worry about going to the barber. Your image is so important. That's the first thing that people see when you show up is your image. Before you even open your mouth, they see you. How do you want to present yourself to this person? So you can wear whatever you want to wear. Um, it's totally up to you, but just remember, we're trying to get these people to like us. We're trying to build their rapport. And the easiest way for us to do that is to become familiar. We want to become relatable. We want these people to think, oh, they're just like us. That's the fastest way to build up a connection. So those are my thoughts on this topic. Uh, comment below, let me know what you think. How important is the image to you? Would you rather go for the BMW truck rather than get you just a Honda Subaru to go and close out this deal? Um, I would love to hear. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Peace.